This is PC gaming, but does it have to be? What if your gaming experience could look like this instead? Welcome to BPS Customs, guys. I'm Brian, and if you're new around here, thanks for stopping by, and remember that if you like these kinds of videos about PC gaming, hardware reviews, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button and come back every week for a fresh one. Also, if you like stupid Twitter posts, I do plenty of that as well. For years, I've been talking about building and testing systems like this, high-end, all-out, sometimes over-the-top expensive gaming machines. This one has a Ryzen 9 5950X and an RTX 3080 Ti, and of course crushes almost every game in 4K and ultra settings, but do you need that? Not like the collective you, I mean specifically you, Terry. Do you have a 4K monitor capable of taking advantage of a system like this? The budget for this kind of a build, and even the desire to sink $4,000 into a PC? For the majority of people, the answer is definitively no. Maybe this build is a curiosity or aspirational, but for everyday function, most people want something that they can reliably turn on, use for web browsing, stream some Netflix, and then occasionally play a quick game or two with family or friends. This is why consoles are so popular. They offer this very simple streamlined experience for a reasonable price and no hassle. Where they fall short is in the auxiliary tasks. Word processing and web browsing are available, but clunky. Third-party app support is limited. Streaming is a no-go without extra equipment, and upgradability isn't really a thing. This is the Mini's Forum UM700, an all-in-one PC that comes pre-built and ready to go. Just plug it in and turn it on. This one is actually the Manjaro Linux edition, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Mini's Forum did send this out for review, and when they reached out to me, the first thing that I did was check out their website to see if they revised it following the controversy last year. For more info on that, I'll leave a link to Gamer's Nexus video down below. But essentially, they were advertising the use of liquid metal as a thermal interface material, and there were issues with this claim. Their website for the UM700 doesn't contain any claims of liquid metal use, and as such, I'm not going to hold that against them when discussing this product. What they do claim, however, is certain frame rates in game, which we will certainly put to the test. So the UM700 is small, like, unexpectedly small. It comes in a simple box with a decent presentation and the unboxing experience is straightforward. The unit itself comes wrapped in a protective plastic to ward off scratches and sits in a foam cutout for protection during shipping. Also in the box, there are HDMI and DisplayPort cables for video connectivity, a small power brick, and also a SATA connector for upgrading your storage with a 2.5 inch drive. You also get a VESA mount, so you can stick this on the back of a monitor for space savings. The unit appears well constructed, but a nitpick that I do have is that they used an incredibly strong adhesive for a sticker that was on the top cover, and when I peeled it off, there was a large amount of residue left behind. This isn't a big deal, and a little goo gone will get this goo gone, but it was kind of a pain. The top cover fastening mechanism is a simple push and click affair, and accessing the internals is quick and easy. Opening up the UM700, we can see the 2x8GB kit of DDR4 SODIMs, which are socketed and upgradable. You can also choose between an 8 or 16GB configuration on the website, but the motherboard supports up to 64 gigs in total. Down below the memory, we can see the NVMe M.2 SSD and an attached heatsink, which again, is easily upgradable. Mini's form sent over the 512 gig version, but you can go as big as your wallet really allows here. Also, on the underside of the top lid, you can see mounts for a 2.5-inch drive, meaning that you could really deck this thing out with a ton of memory and storage if that's what you need. The combination heart and brain of the UM700 is the Ryzen 7 3750H, a 4-core, 8-thread Zen 2 CPU from AMD that features Vega 10 graphics on board. This isn't the cutting edge anymore, but still should be up to the task of some light gaming. The back of the enclosure features both HDMI and DisplayPort outputs, along with two USB 3.0 ports and a 2.5 gig LAN port. 
And the front has USB-C, two more USB Type-A, a combo headphone mic jack, the power button, and a BIOS reset button inside of a recessed hole. This is a huge amount of connectivity considering how small this box is. And I was pleasantly surprised with how many accessories I could attach at once. Now the Manjaro crossover means that this particular UM700 sells for $60 less than the standard unit due to the lack of a Windows license and comes pre-installed with Manjaro Linux. I did mess around a little bit in the Linux environment and found it to be pretty intuitive, but for several reasons, I needed Windows on this machine. First, I'm not a Linux expert by any means, and second, I wanted to test out their claims of gaming performance. And to do that, I needed Steam, Epic Games, and other launchers. So I pretty easily just popped in a Windows 10 USB and installed a fresh copy just as you would with any other PC. So far, so good. The frame rate claims on the Minis Forum website are, let's just call them bold. The 3750H is no slouch, but hitting these kinds of frame rate targets at 1080p is going to be challenging for any iGPU. From their list, I tested out a bunch of them, giving their testing the benefit of the doubt by running each game at 1080p, but at the absolute lowest available settings in the menus. I turned down detail, I turned off AA, and of course there was no ray tracing. Here's how it went. Fortnite was up first, and right off the bat, we have problems. Minis Foreign claims 60 to 80 frames per second here, and not only were we not close to hitting those kinds of numbers, the game itself was unplayable due to the constant stuttering and skipping. I think there was a VRAM issue here as frame times were constantly spiking to the point where I couldn't recommend the UM700 for this game. Next was PUBG, which I haven't tested in actually quite a long time. The target here of greater than 40 is a little nebulous, but when I was seeing 30 to 32 frames per second just running around the map without even getting into any kind of fast paced firefight, I was definitely disappointed. I booted up GTA 5 next and was pleasantly surprised with the results. Granted, this is a game from seven years ago, but at 1080p and low settings, the claims of 40 to 50 frames per second held up quite well. And the experience of playing this game was actually great with no stuttering or hitching at all. But the good times were short-lived as Far Cry 5 brought the 3750H to its knees. Even at the lowest setting, I wasn't able to see anything close to the claim 25 to 36 frames per second. And in fact, the final benchmark result was under 20, making this again, unfortunately, unplayable. Of course, when all else fails, we go back to what is still probably the most popular game in the world, CSGO. This was a fun one, honestly, and I even cranked the settings all the way up to medium because it looked like the system could handle it. And I was seeing a consistent 60 plus FPS here, which made for a good time all around. I had mixed results at best in The Witcher 3 though, which Minis Forum claims to hit 30 frames per second. I was getting somewhere in the low to mid 20s, even with everything possible turned off in the settings, which made combat awkward and difficult. Occasionally with everything falling into place, the game would spike up to 30 or 32 frames per second, but this was short lived. Again, I have to call this a failure. And then we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Why in the world they thought this was a title that they should test with a 3750H and no discrete graphics, I, I have no idea. This is a punishing graphical experience for any system, and when running through the benchmark, there were often scenes that only partially rendered, or were drawn so slowly that you could watch entire areas of the screen populate individually. The overall result came nowhere near the claimed 25 to 40 frames per second, and was usually in the teens. When I was done comparing those titles though, I kind of had an epiphany. People who are buying this kind of a PC are likely not going to be frame rate snobs. They won't be loading up MSI Afterburner and staring at a tiny counter in the top left corner of the screen to make sure it doesn't drop below 60. They're going to want to play some games with their kids and enjoy the experience. Or hop in an online match with friends and trade good natured barbs and unwind after work. So I played some games without looking at the frame rate. And you know what? I had a blast. CSGO and GTA 5 were of course already great surprises. But then to see Rocket League, Dirt Rally 2, and even Doom Eternal run at acceptable pacing was awesome. Sure, not all the games looked as good as they would at 4K or ultra settings, but to be honest, 
you have to know that at a certain price point, you're gonna have to make compromises. Why not just enjoy a piece of technology for what it can actually do rather than be perpetually disappointed by what it can't? After that, I decided to try out some OBS. So I did some recording and streaming to see if the UM700 was up to the task. Recording was no problem as CPU use stayed around 20% and the system wasn't using more than five or six gigs of memory. After that, I loaded up a stream on YouTube. And again, this was no sweat as OBS didn't drop a single frame and CPU, GPU usage was well within reason. That's not to say that you can do both things at the same time. You probably can't game and stream simultaneously, but this will allow applications like using this as a streaming system if you wanna capture other gameplay, or if you wanna hook up a camera via a cam link and just do some just chatting on Twitch. I think the UM700 is more than capable. I wasn't bold enough to try video editing. However, I know it can technically do it, However, I wouldn't expect a premium experience here for that kind of heavy application if your workflow contains 4K video files. Maybe if you're working only with 1080p footage or exclusively with proxies, this might do okay with a quarter preview window, but I think I would probably shy away from choosing this as my daily editing rig. That's not what it's made for. So what do I think of the UM700? Well, Minis Forum makes some bold claims on its gaming prowess that don't really hold up to scrutiny. I'm not sure why they do this, because not only is it easily disprovable, but it's also not entirely relevant. Why make these kinds of claims when you can simply say something to the effect of, the UM700 provides a fun, easy gaming experience? When I wasn't concerned about how the system was performing compared to an arbitrary target, I was very happy with what I was getting. But looking at a frame rate counter and comparing the results to their claims made me annoyed? The UM700 is an impressive little machine. It's super compact, clearly. It's portable, it's easy to access and upgrade, it runs extremely stable and quiet, and overall I was happy with it. For $539, I think it's a portable powerhouse, but Minis Forum needs to revise its approach to marketing once again. It doesn't serve the company any good to produce what is effectively a very good product that is ruined by unsubstantiated marketing claims. But maybe there is a pattern here now, and it will be one that we will have to keep our eye on for future releases. So what do you guys think of the Minis Forum UM700? Let me know down below in the comments if it's something that you consider buying for yourself or for others. Also, don't forget to hit that bell if this video was fun or interesting, and consider getting subscribed so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.